Um, again, good evening. My, I'm Detective Beck with the Fairfield Police Department. Um, and we're here to talk about some fraud and financial crimes. Um, real quick, I won't go too much into my background. I am the final financial crimes detective with Fairfield PD. I've been in this position for a little over three years, or about three years now. Um, got kind of a financial background. I have my bachelor's in finance and my, I recently got my MBA. I've also been doing this about 20 years and it seems like I'm always somewhat connected or investigating something financial at some point. So um, I've been doing this for quite a while. Um, I'm also an instructor for uh, drug influence, DUI driving. So I teach officers all over the, the California and other things as well. We are putting this presentation on to get the word out. Um, I am one person, I am inundated with cases. I'm hoping maybe we can prevent victims from being victimized. So um, the moral of tonight is gonna be, take this back, tell your loved ones, tell your friends, get the word out, because I really, I'm t I, it's tough seeing victims and a lot of cases I have trouble working. So I have a lot of tough conversations with people on the phone and I'd really like to get the word out for people to, so they aren't victimized anymore. That would be my ultimate goal. If you have questions along the way, we do have a microphone that we can hand out to you. Um, I'm fine as long as it's a kind of a quick question. It doesn't interrupt things too much. If you want to do it while we have a, a certain screen up, that's fine. Otherwise, we can answer questions at the end. I will stay as long as needed to answer any other questions. So um, we're going to answer a few questions tonight. Can this happen to me? How do I identify the scams and protect myself? And if I fall victim to a scam, what do I do? Some of the criminal statutes that we that I usually uh, work with in California is our identity theft section, um, fraudulent use of a credit card, debit card, theft by false false pretenses. This is one of the big ones. Lots of high dollar amount of losses in this one. Uh, most of the scams we talk about tonight are usually going to fall under this, which is the theft by false pretenses section. They take your money under certain certain scams, certain information, and really all they're doing is victimizing you. Some extortion, uh, still a lot of forgery and check fraud. We'll touch on checks here in a little while. And this is my favorite, is financial elder abuse. Anybody 65 or older, if I can prove that the suspects knew that they were over 65, I can then add this on. It's kind of, to me, it sounds a lot better than just theft. Um, it's got more of a, a tone to it if it does go to court and we have suspects. So um, I do like to use that one quite a bit. Uh, and then also just our regular theft sections. Um, I have also in parentheses mail theft, um, which I'm going to talk about in just a little bit as well. But mail theft does fall into the theft realm of things in the penal code. So this screen just kind of shows some of our losses the last few years. If I was to ask anybody in this room, if you were a victim of some kind of financial scam, would you know to go to FBI's IC3 website and report it to them? I see no hands. That's exactly. So these numbers are going to be much low. Um, already, they're always the Fed's stats are usually a year or two behind, but um, I can tell you these are very low numbers. We're talking billions of dollars of losses each year now. Um, the United States is just getting inundated with cases. A lot of the money goes overseas, and it's big losses, and they are not fully documented. Some of the common types of fraud scams that we will run into is uh, pig butchering, romance scams. I usually have a bunch of hands go up about pig butchering. I will definitely talk about that because most people don't know about it. So I will I have its own slides, so we'll get back to that one. Um, email, text messages, and phone scams. Um, some social media, Facebook, Facebook Messenger. LinkedIn is a popular one right now. Um, puppy sales, merchandise purchases, mail theft, and check washing. Believe it or not, it's still very, very popular among our suspects. Um, some home rental scams, um, job offer scams, company advertisements and money account protections of different sorts. And also some of our adult websites are also can be a problem. So how do we identify different types of scams? I'm gonna go in the next few minutes into a bunch of examples of certain emails and things to watch out for. I'm, my job here is to, when you get an email that looks suspicious, how do you identify that and what do you do with it? So I'm gonna spend quite a few minutes just on uh, several slides going through these emails. 
these are ones that I have uh, I've grabbed and I've, I'm going to point out certain things you can look for in these emails before you fall victim to something. One of our most popular right now is the Best Buy Geek Squad. Um, most everybody in this room has probably gotten these, whether you uh, shop from Best Buy or shop from their Geek Squad. The Geek Squad is a section of Best Buy that does um, installations, computer work, um, electronic work for customers, and you can take your computers to them. They can fix them or work on them, or they'll come to your house as well. Um, but there's a lot of scams involving the Geek Squad right now, and so I've had quite a few cases involving them, so I, I do touch on a few of those slides. For example, what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start breaking these emails apart before you click on anything, before you open attachments, before you call phone numbers, before you reach out to them. We wanna break these emails apart. We wanna look and try to identify some of the fraud that's going on in these emails. If you can do that, you'll be protecting yourself. So in this example, the email says, dear user. It doesn't refer to me, doesn't refer to anything but dear user. And if you read the content of most of these emails, most of these emails are generated overseas. The suspects don't have a good knowledge of the English language. There'll be a lot of grammatical uh, errors. There's gonna be punctuation errors. Those are the things you wanna key in on because a reputable company like Best Buy, they're not gonna send this kind of stuff out. They're gonna to refer to us in a professional manner. They're gonna have somebody that's well-spoken, that understands the English language and are gonna be able to communicate with us. So when you start seeing problems with the writing or the spelling or the punctuation, that should be a red flag. So in this case, they're just referring to me as dear user. It says, thank you for choosing our services. Your personal subscription, Geek Squad Care, will expire today. The subscription will be auto renew as per plan selected at your end. Please review your purchased summary below. The verbiage doesn't sound, there's, there's some issues there. I think we could all agree. Um, one thing as we go through these emails, there's usually gonna be two different elements to each one. There's gonna be some kind of time constraint on there. So if they're having a time constraint, you must act now. You have a day to respond, you have three days to respond, something along those lines, and they're always gonna want some kind of money. They're here to make your money, to get your money from you. So at some point, there's going to be a financial part of this, whether it's initially in the email or if you make the, happen to make the phone call, hopefully you don't. But if you reach out to them, there's usually gonna be a money, money involved because that's what they're ultimately here for. So you have to keep that in mind. Whether most of them are in the emails, but sometimes they wait until you call them. So I think we agree that the verbiage here just isn't quite right. The next part of this is there you are, your Geek Squad, you've got $417 charge for your subscription and you have to reply by a certain date. So there's our charge, our amount they're looking for, and the date. Um, at the bottom it says, this, is, this subscription will auto renew every year, every is capitalized in the middle of the sentence, unless you turn it off no later than 24 hour before the end of subscription period. It doesn't sound proper English. So that's the big thing to key in on that email. This one here, first things first, before you even go into the body of the email, look at who it came from. If I'm getting a Best Buy Geek Squad email, it should be from Best Buy Geek Squad. This one here is from Best Buy Geek Squad, but the actual name on it is Ida Emmerich, and the Gmail is shehuatuahero066 at gmail.com. No reputable, no reputable business uses Gmail. So right then and there, that should be a flag. You open an email, you see something like that. If you're expecting an email from Geek Squad or whoever, and it has that strange email address, it's probably gonna be a scam. So right then and there, at the very beginning, we see that there's a problem. Going farther into the email, this one just says, dear, doesn't refer to me, doesn't have refer to my name or anything, it says, dear, we hope it will be a good experience for you to, to be a part of us again. Doesn't sound proper. Thank you for the valued member, thank you for being valued member of Geek Squad, period. And then we is not capitalized, so beginning of the sentence it says, we are writing to you about the renewal of your membership it's got a date on there. It's also got a, a price of $435 for five years until you cancel. So if you don't own a Geek Squad e uh, membership, you're going to fear that you being charged for a membership you didn't, you didn't purchase, you're going to immediately call that number to make sure it's canceled. That's what they're trying to do is lure you into canceling a product that you did not buy. Again, staying with Geek Squad, very top of this email, the 
the uh, info line is re with a colon. If you have any correction for purchase number, blah, 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 let me know. It's almost like you've been going back and forth with emails, which of course you haven't, this is a new email. But if we look at who, who this came from, it's got a certain name there and then a, another gibberish Gmail account. So it's not a Best Buy uh, email that it's coming from. In the body, it's referring to me as the beginning of my email address, so not my name, just my email address. On behalf of, and it's got a lot of letters and numbers together, I'd like to express our deepest gratitude for your continued membership. Again, if we're not, we didn't order a membership with them, we're gonna fear that we're being charged for something we didn't order, we're gonna call immediately, and that's what they're trying to get to you on. The verbiage, again, is doesn't make any sense, and then it says we'll be renewed by, and it gives you a date and an actual time, um, and so they, they want you to jump on this and call them before that time comes. At the bottom, it says, note you, only have, you have only 16 hours to cancel or modify this order. There's our time frame. You have 16 hours, you better do this. For any modification, cancellation, or any special requests, please call, and it's got a phone number there. One thing you're gonna see with a lot of these emails, and they're actually getting better with this, the return address, they're trying to look official, so the return address at the bottom of the email is 1203 East River, Georgia, United States. They don't understand how we do our addresses, so they're gonna have an address that's not a legitimate, it's gonna look kind of funny, so if you see an address at the bottom, you wanna make sure you check on that, because that could be a clue. However, I just got one from Amazon here this week that they're getting better at the address. This is more of a United States type of address being listed, so they might be getting a little smarter, but typically they still will list an address that doesn't make any sense. We do not do our addresses here. They don't even give you a city in Georgia where this is from. Again, going to the next email, gives us an order number in the information line that makes it look like it's official. This one actually has my name. I'm going back. This one actually has my name, but the email address, so it's Christopher Beck sending me this and it has a, another Gmail with a long gibberish type of name and it, from a Gmail account. So it's got my name, but a weird Gmail account, and then of course it's being sent to me as well. Again, they say dear, they don't refer to me for anything, they say dear. Um, and they talk about your, your membership or antivirus program has reached its end. Um, they have a date there that I have to respond by. At the bottom, it's, it's got the Geek Squad tech support, and the address is 1219 San Jacinto Street in the United States. <laughs> it's a clue. So we see that type of stuff, we know we shouldn't go any further with it. Um, this one here, it's got a ticket number in the section. Again, it's my name sending me this email. So Christopher Beck sending me this email, but it's from a Gmail account that I don't recognize that's sending it to me. At the bottom, you have your 12 hours. You have to cancel within 12 hours without incurring any penalties and then contact this number. So that number, there'll be somebody to call. They're gonna start the uh, sweet talking you and try and get, get your money from you, whatever the scam is gonna be. And these people are very, very savvy. That's why they do this. They wouldn't do this if they didn't get any money. So they're very savvy. A lot of people I present to say, this never happened to me. They kind of chuckle at things, but it's happening. That's why I'm here talking to you, so. The very bottom, thanks and regards, Geek Squad. It's got a, a phone number there, and again, the address is 161 West 500 North Arizona, United States. So not a legit address. Continuing, um, it's got my name again, but the Gmail account's from farth2010 at gmail.com. They said, again, dear, they don't uh, refer to me for, by any name. It says, dear, we hope that your experience with Geek, Geek Squad has been positive. Um, it's, you must, we're glad to enroll you with us, and they give us a date on what, when they were enrolled for a membership that I never purchased. So the idea is I panic, I call that number saying, I didn't order this, cancel my subscription, and then they're gonna want some personal information or something to continue the scam. The bottom says, thanks, Geek Squad support, and then sending address, again, it's some, some drive in California, United States, but no city. This one here, again, looking at the address, um, uh, the email address, it's B-G-H-R-E-W, and it's got a Gmail account there. 
I purchased a membership of some sort, but it's a really strange Gmail email account. Gmail is very, very easy to get an, uh, an open an email account with very little information. That's why a lot of our suspects use Gmail because it's very easy to open. You don't have to usually give much information. It doesn't necessarily have to be credible information. It's very easy to use. That's why a lot of our suspects go to Gmail, but it's a popular platform in you know, the United States. So it, it, I guess the idea is that we will accept it because it's something that's well used here. A lot of these emails will have a, a attachment to click on. Do not click on those attachments. If you click on attachments and emails, a couple of different things could happen. They could take you to a site that's going to possibly include the fraud or continue the fraud, or it might download software to your computer that could be even worse. So you do not want to click on any attachments on these emails. Um, let's talk really quick. What do you do with these emails? Um, you can delete them. I would suggest if you have, depending on your, your uh, email service provider, there's usually a spam folder or a junk folder. I would suggest sending them to that because the software, as it gets better in our email systems, they will start to recognize these and automatically put them there. They won't go to your inbox anymore. So instead of just deleting them, I would send them to your spam folder, your junk folder, so the system starts to recognize these emails and you won't see as much of them. And then once every week or two, I go to my spam folder and I make sure there's nothing legit in there and I'll just delete it all. But it's, always, it's an extra step, but it's a, a good step to help the good software try and learn about the bad. So that's what I would suggest doing, or you can just delete them, however you want to do it. But don't, don't click on these attachments by any means. This one here, it's the email name is purchase, but the email address is zoemadeline at hotmail.com. Doesn't sound legit at all. Um, and this one, it says dear. Again, they didn't refer to me, but I supposedly made a purchase for 16,640 euros. If I didn't order anything in euros, this is obviously a scam. So um, that sounds like a lot of euros, and it is, but um, I did not do that. So, you know, it's, it's a scam. Don't think that you purchased something you didn't. Um, we already see now, based on that email address and this body of this email, that this is going to be a scam. And there's the attachment at the bottom. They want you to see what you paid for, a receipt, invoice, whatever it is. They want you to click on that so you see what the purchase was for. And then it's going to take over and do something either to your computer or they're going to take you to another website to try and get you to put in information or something. Again, with this one, continuing very top, we're going to look at the email address. This one's from, the name is sales02. But the uh, email address is some weird name from hotmail.com. So right there, it looks suspicious. In the body, it says, good day. It doesn't say anything about me. The verbiage is a little, little strange as well. There's your attachment they want you to click on. And this one, the return address is out of Dubai. So if you haven't done anything with Dubai, probably shouldn't have to worry about this. So I wouldn't click on anything from Dubai if I didn't do anything, any business with them. This one here, it says, we received your payment for receipt number, blah, blah, blah. So the idea is if you didn't make a payment to this, you're going to worry that all of a sudden your money's gone. It really isn't. They're just trying to get your money. Um, this, again, again, this is me. It's got my name sending me an email, which is strange. And it's got a weird Gmail address that actually sent the information. The account registered with my email address has been successfully charged for $415. A copy of this receipt is also in, this, in your statement. Well, I don't have a statement. There's nothing to click on, which I'm not going to click on anyway, but they're trying to make this look more official. The bottom there, please do not reply to this email. If you, received a, this, if, for, if you have received it for a specific reason, please reach out to us directly through the contact information provided at the bottom of the message. So the verbiage is a little strange. If you can see the phone number there, the phone number is 1866, and it's got a capital A with a doohickey over it. Not a US phone number by any means. Right there, I'm, if I haven't already recognized beforehand, that's definitely a sign that this is a scam. So we do not wanna, I don't even know how you'd call that number unless you just delete the A and go with the rest of it. Lots of Amazon. I actually was working in my yard last week and I got a call from an Amazon scam and I um, couldn't take the call initially, but I got a voice message from it. So I actually dropped everything, went inside. I was going to record it, try and get you something for that. And they, the number would answer. Nobody would talk and they'd hang up on me. So I unfortunately couldn't get you any audio on that. But I just, they're still, Amazon's very popular because most of us have Amazon accounts. Um, so 
You have to be aware, if you do have an Amazon account, that there might be legit Amazon emails, but we're gonna break those down. This one here is Amazon telling me my account has been suspended. The email address is billing at cs-amazon.com. That has Amazon, it could be legit, but if then you look at the actual email address that it was sent from, it says support at wealthyin.com. Not an Amazon email address. So right there, we're thinking this is a scam. Also, if you, if you can see it, this was sent out to numerous, probably about 10 different email addresses. I guess they're letting us all know our account suspended all at the same time. That would never happen. They're gonna let me know my account, there's a problem with my account, not all 10 of us at one time. So again, the very top of the email, we're noticing this is a scam. There will be a lot of these emails where they will use and adopt the actual legit logos from these companies. So you can't get caught up by that because it does look like an Amazon logo. It looks like it could be legit, but it really isn't. This box here, there's your click button. It says verify account. They want you to click on that. And then it's gonna do something to you, either your computer or it's gonna take you to another web page where they're gonna try and get your information. Right below it, it says you need, you need complete your verification within three days. All activity will be canceled. Once you verify, you'll be able to regain access. We appreciate your patience with, all, with our all measures. Again, verbiage, they, don't, they, they aren't speaking properly. And that's a huge sign there. PayPal, um, I'm gonna talk about money payment systems here in a few minutes, but you do get a lot of different money systems, people reaching out for money for different things. This one here is my favorite though. I do have a PayPal account, but this one's from Outback Steakhouse. So I do eat dinner at Outback Steakhouse uh, occasionally. And Outback Steakhouse is such a great company, they're letting me know my PayPal account's been suspended. So. <laughs> It's kind of a joke, but that's what this one's doing. It's Outback Steakhouse telling me that my paper, there's a problem with my PayPal account. But if you look at down below, um, it's Outback's logo, but then the email address, the from email address is service at paypal.com, and then it's got it's letting a bunch of us know that our PayPal accounts have been suspended. That's not going to happen. Financial stuff is going to come to me. I'm the customer. They're not going to let us all know our account's suspended at one time, so we know that's a scam. And of course, they want you to log in. Um, I do have cases where somebody, they've been able to hack or take over PayPal accounts. So that could be the reason why. They maybe lo they logged in, provided their login information for PayPal, and the suspects were able to take that over and then make charges to it. I, I'm just suspecting in those cases, but they want you to click on this. And that's what this is about because my account's been restricted. The next one, it also my account has been restricted again. If you look at the email address, it's from PayPal, but then well, the, it says service at paypal.com, but the email address is not PayPal. And again, it's been sent to a bunch of us, not just me. That's a red flag. Payments or shipping systems, lots of deliveries out there. I actually, while I was sitting here getting ready for this presentation, I got one, and this one was pretty clever because it came from the uh, US Customs Service, letting me know that USPS couldn't find my address. So you see something official from U.S. Customs, you're thinking, oh, no, what, ha what came in the mail? It's got my name on it. Um, and it happened just while we were standing here. So um, these are very popular deliveries. People want to get their packages. They want to make sure they don't miss stuff. So if there's a problem, we want to get right on it. And that's what they're preying upon in this is uh, the, the delivery systems. They want you to call to verify your information. So what we're going to do is break these emails down just like the others. We're going to look at the top. The second attempt of notification to me. Um, please respond, and it says it's from FedEx, but if you look at the email address, it's not FedEx. So you wanna look at that. This one here's got a, a place that looks like you could click. We've been trying to reach you, please respond immediately. And um, I don't know what that inject 797 is at the top. I think they got my screen name wrong, and they're addressing this to somebody else. Not very official. This one here actually has the beginning of my email address with a checkbox on it. So they want me to click there where they're gonna get my information. And that one's from DHL. Here's another one from DHL. Again, looking at the top, it says DHL Service Inclu Incorporated, but the actual address is Zoe Madeline at hotmail.com. So, not legit, not from DHL. We can tell it's a scam. And it's also got three different links for us to click on there. So, hopefully, you'll choose one of them. This one here, talking about a package I'm supposed to get, please respond. It says it's from FedEx, but if you look at the email address, it's admin at some kind of strange email address. So not FedEx email address. 
Everybody wants to win stuff, get free stuff. So that's what they're kind of preying upon. A lot of these scams will prey upon our greed. Everybody's got a little bit of a greed bug to them. Not saying we're greedy people, but who doesn't want free things? And they play, prey upon that. So I'm always getting offers to win things or get free stuff in the mail or in, by email. And a lot of these things are scams. So in this case, we have one from CVS saying I'm a winner of something. But if you, again, we're not, nothing changes, you look at the email address, Sometimes with some of these, you'll see some weird print, not normal type of lettering. You'll see it'll, they'll get kind of crazy with their printing, which should be a sign or a clue. Um, this one says, thank you at the top, and then it's got a weird email address it came from. They want me to click on this so I can claim my prize. And again, this will just, I can't tell you what will happen with this. It'll just lead us into the more of the scam. They'll either put something to infect your computer or they'll want you to call and they'll, they'll get your information. This one's from Walmart. Get a $500 Walmart gift card, but if you look at the top, it's the weird, the weird um, writing. 500 gift card, 624, and it, it, the, the font's strange. And the email address also is not a Walmart email address. This one's from Dick's Sporting Goods. I get a lot from them as well. It says Dick's Sporting Goods, but if you look at the email address, it's info at uswavy.com. So not a legit email address. Virus, virus scams, scans. Um, there's a lot of these that come through as well. You'll think, hey, I'm going to get a virus scan so I can avoid all these things that are, I'm previously talking about, but some of these are scams as well. So you need to make sure you purchase a legit virus scan and not go buy one of these emails because you think you're helping your computer and all you're doing is infecting it. So uh, McAfee's one of the big ones. I'm not supporting or any type of computer software whatsoever. You know, there's technical people for that. I'm just saying that the cabbie is one of the most popular, but there's also a lot of scams with it as well. Um, there's a, it says your device was infected with 50 viruses. I can't have that. I better click on this link to try and get rid of those viruses. At the bottom, it says activate now. Click on this link here. Um, if, and the note at the bottom, if no subscription is registered, registered is misspelled, your account will be marked inactive and be delete in 48 hours. So again, the, the grammar is wrong as well. More McAfee stuff. Um, final notice, your computer will no longer be protected. The email address is really strange. It's another, it looks like it's uh, lifestyleemail.com. It's, it's really strange email address, so we, that's a clue there. Continue on, antivirus software. Here's a plan, All the, the your auto renew plan is active. Sounds strange. It comes from another Gmail account, and they have a click there to you want. They want you to click that attachment. This one here, again, addressed to me, but it's a weird Gmail account, so that's the very top of the email. So here's where I want to get to this. So we all we have our address in California, United States, no city, which is a clue. But right below that, if you can see it, there's a little unsubscribe button. We don't want to click that because what you could be doing is doing the exact thing they're trying to get you to do with the links. If it's a not a legit email, send it to your spam folder, send it to your delete folder or your trash folder. Do not click the unsubscribe button if it's a not a legit email. If you have a certain vendor you made purchases from and they just start blowing up your email with all these ads and stuff and you know it's a legit place, you might be able to hit unsubscribe and click out of it. But if you can readily tell that this is not a good email and it's a fraudulent email, you click unsubscribe, it could be doing the exact same thing they're trying to get you to do. So be very leery of that. If you don't know, send it to spam folder. Don't even click on this unsubscribe. Don't use that if you're unsure. Continuing, this is a loan. Looks like they, I took out a loan of some sort. Um, for $10,000, I didn't do that. They're going to prey upon the fact that I'm going to worry about this and I'm going to call them or contact them because I didn't take out that loan. It's the, but if you look, the email address is really a strange email address. Um, the, ver the, pro the verbiage isn't there. There's a click uh, link there that I need to click. Confirm loan amount here. So they want me to click that. This is credit reports. Somebody's run a background check on me and two negative items have been added to me. All of us want clear credit. That's a problem. They want us to call them and try and, and clarify the problem. So nobody wants anything, any bad on their thing, anything bad on their record. But we're, again, we're looking up there. It says the email is from public records, but the actual email address is admin at leisuremembrane.com. 
I know this is repetitive, but I'm making sure that we have an understanding how to break these things down because this is the kind of stuff that's working on, our, on my victims. There's a possible uh, link to click there to see what negative items have been added. It says the bottom new items in the last 48 hours may have been added that everyone can see. This could affect future and current jobs, relationships, and more. So they're preying upon our fear of that being added to our records. They want you to follow the instructions. And at the bottom, there's that unsubscribe button. And then it came from a company called PeopleWiz Incorporated. And it has an address with a suite number, no city, no state, nothing else. This one here is Social Security, suspension case, and it's got a link to it, click. Right now, the federal government does not contact people by email. They still use snail mail, and it's for a reason. So the IRS, Social Security, your other government entities, they're going to reach out to you by email, and they're going to want you to call you, and they're going to want you to call them. If you get an email from one of these, com these, these uh, government entities, it's more than likely f fake. It's false right now. I can't tell you what the future is going to bring because everything's going uh, digital. But right now, the federal government will contact you by mail. So um, I see something from Social Security. That's a, it definitely gets my attention. But then if I'm still questioning it, look at the email address. It's from an email address at gmx.at. So a strange email address. So we're not going to want to do anything with this. We're not going to want to click the link. This one here is from a uh, friend of mine. He likes to send me a lot of emails. Um, and I've confirmed a long time ago that these aren't legit emails. So somehow they got this person's name and they like to send me things, try and get me to click on things. And I know it's uh, not a legit uh, person. So let's talk about account takeovers. I've had quite a few of these cases recently. So you're working on your computer. You might be doing some financial stuff on the computer. And all of a sudden, the screen pops up, similar to this one. And says your computer's been locked. You can't do anything. You can't get out of it. You want, they want you to call this number. It could be from Microsoft. It could be from Windows. It could be from the government. What do we do? Again, not being the tech savvy person that I am, I have found out that the best thing to do here is unplug your device, take it in to be checked out by a legitimate person. If you want to try and turn it off first, you, you can. But the best way to do is power that thing down, have it looked at by a, the proper person because you don't know if something's been on your computer and been infected. If you call that number, it's definitely going to lead to a scam. If you click on anything, you could download the software that they're trying to get onto your computer. So this could be really critical. You don't want to do anything with these if this does happen to you. And I've had a lot of scams recently where they've somehow gotten this onto somebody's computer and the person's called the Microsoft number or the government number that's on there and then the scam just goes on from there. So if this does happen to you, unplug your device, power it off, take it to the legit geek squad or whoever else that can check your computer out for you. So believe it or not, these things here, these phones are little computers. These days you can do almost anything on these that you can do with a computer. And so it's probably, it's, you need to recognize that and understand that because these type of scams go straight into our phones as well. Um, a lot of text messages. I just told you I got one from the uh, custom service about a delivery that was they were trying to deliver as a text message that came to my phone. So we have to be aware of that as well as we're getting these text messages because the same thing could happen. You could click on a link and download something to your phone so they have access to all your apps. If your app's automatically open, like banking apps or anything, they can jump right into those. So your personal information can really be... Uh, uh, access through your phone as well. It's not just computers. So I got a, a couple of examples with this. This one here is from Amazon. They're letting me know my account's been locked. So same type of scam. Click on this link before. You have 48 hours to avoid permanent suspension. Amazon's here to make money. If there's something wrong with my account, I'm sure I could rectify that and get my account open again. They're not going to permanently suspend my account in 48 hours. So with any of these things, if, it, you, if I'm still suspicious about this Amazon um, text message, don't do anything with this. Find a legit phone number for Amazon, call that number. Don't ever use any information in any of these links or any of these emails or text messages. Always find an outside number that you're able to find that's legit and call them that way. They'll be able to confirm this is a scam. Okay. Also, at the very top, it's probably hard to see, but they're 
the from person is not like a regular phone number. It's a strange uh, series of words and nothing says Amazon on it, so that's a flag as well. This one's from Chase Bank. I do have a account with Chase Bank and they're wanting to give me a fraud alert. So this could be legitimate. I have to make sure I pay attention to it. It says, we detected an unusual attempt at 3412 College Avenue, California, and then a zip code. So again, no city. That to me is, is a flag, this is a scam. If this, was not, if this was not you, use the secured link to verify and identify and secure your account, and there's a link there. I'm not gonna call, click on that link. I'm not gonna refer to any phone number they might provide. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna look at the back of my credit card, and I'm gonna call Chase from there. That's the proper way to do it, so you can try and avoid any of these scams. At the very bottom, bottom there, it says in blue writing, report junk. The thing about reporting these is if it's, a, if it's a, a junk folder that your phone service provides, it might be okay to click, but if it's also something that the bad guy sent to you, it may also disrupt your phone. So it's better probably just to delete these things. More text messages. This is Netflix this time, saying my next Netflix account's been suspended. It's got a, a link there for me to click on to avoid that. The very top does have a phone number. It says sell, but then it has a bunch of lines beyond it, like it, there's more to be added, but it's not there. It, it doesn't look proper. This one here is from Venmo. Venmo is one of those payment systems that we will talk about. It says my Venmo account's been suspended. I do have a Venmo account, so I do need to pay attention to this. But again, at the top, it's got a phone number that's listed as cell, and it's got a bunch of other things that come after it. Uh, flat lines, some, um, some letters toward the end there. It just does not look like a legit phone number. And of course, they want me to click on that link, and they want me to verify my account. What I will then do is I'll find a legitimate way to access my Venmo account, and I'll verify my stuff that way. This one's from USPS. It says a package needs to be delivered. They don't have my correct delivery address. USPS has its issues, but they usually have my address. So if I'm expecting a package, more than likely they have my address. This is gonna be a scam. They want you to verify this by clicking the link or calling a number, and then they're gonna somehow introduce you to the rest of the scam from there. So if I'm concerned about this, I find it a legit number for USPS outside, or I go to my local branch and ask them about it. This one here is one of our, um, our advertising scams. I've had a few of these come up, which is why I included it. You'll get a random text message or email saying, hey, you can make some money on your car if you just advertise for this or that company. Put an put a adhesive or a, um, a magnetic sign on your door, drive around advertising our company, we'll pay you so and so much money every month. Sounds like a, a good idea. We can make money while we're just driving around, but most of these things are a scam. You'll call the number and then usually they want you to pay up front for certain things like the advertisements or other fees and then they'll just take as much money as they can and they'll never legitimately put you to work. So it's typically a scam. So we have a lot of just uh, phone calls as well. It's referred to as vishing and social media. So I'm still getting a lot of cases regarding sweepstakes and lottery winners. It's unfortunate, but a lot of people want their winnings. They believe it's legitimate. And usually once they get you hooked that you want money, then you have to prepay for taxes. You have to prepay for shipping. You have to prepay for this or that. And they're just gonna bleed you out of money until there's no more left and then they'll cut off communication. But the thing for you is, I'm not, when I say you, it's in general, I'm not pointing the fingers, but um, usually it's, you're in, you get in so deep, well, it's a million dollars, I want my million dollars, I'm only out 10,000, I'll keep going because it's a million dollars, I want my million dollars, and they'll just keep drawing the money out of you. So um, usually by the time I get these cases, there's a large loss, and usually because of the time frame, there's little we can do about it. The old saying is, if it's too good to be true, it probably is, well, that's, you gotta consider that in these cases. Not often in this world do we actually get free money, things just handed to us, um, so you have to keep that in mind. Arrest warrants and trouble with the law. Still quite a few of these come through. Um, with artificial intelligence, these are gonna get even worse because um, most recent case we had was a, a grandmother was home at her house, person showed up saying her grandson had just ran into her with the car and you know he's a little injured but if she gives him some money, he'll go away and not do anything with the insurance. So she wrote a check, he went away and called later on, found out her grandson was nowhere near and 
So that's similar to this. A lot of times they'll call saying you have an arrest warrant, you have this, you have that. As a, as a law enforcement agency, let me tell you, we do not call you and let you know we're coming for you. <laughs> you laugh, but that's the way it is. We're not gonna give you a chance to arm yourself, to flee. We, if you have a legitimate warrant where we need to take care of it, we're gonna show up and we're gonna get you or grab you as you're coming from your house. We're not going to call you and say, we're coming, get dressed, do this, do that. It doesn't happen. So, and it gets even more funnier, but we're also, we're not going to accept payments for warrants. We're not going to accept gift cards for warrants. We're not gonna accept uh, payments by Venmo or by cryptocurrency. It just does not happen. It's gonna be a legitimate, we're the government, and usually it goes through the courts. Those payments are gonna be legitimate, check, cash, maybe sometimes credit cards or bail of some sort. So a lot of these things usually lead to just a strange payments, which should also be another flag. These suspects do prey upon our weaknesses, um, loneliness. I run into a lot of victims that are just lonely. They want people to talk to, they want um, companionship, and it's easy to get sucked into these scams with that. I've had some heartbreaking calls from all over the United States with victims that were getting scammed, thinking that they had a relationship with a person which was not legitimate. Um, and I've some of them have understood after I got off the phone with them, and some of them just would not listen to me. So um, they do prey upon any weakness they can to get money from us. Um, wrong numbers, if somebody calls and it's a wrong number and then all of a sudden this conversation kicks off and uh, I've had a few of these where they've gotten people to invest in investments, it's a random call. Well, how did this happen? You have to kind of ask yourself, is this legitimate because this person just randomly called me out of, no, out of nowhere? It's, it's, it's an issue, you should recognize that. Uh, I talked about the family and loved ones in trouble. Um, per, a family and loved one's been arrested, you need to provide bail, you need to prepay for uh, law representation, things of that nature. Hang up the phone, call another family member and verify the information from a legit family member. The where this is gonna get a little tricky is with AI, these wrong phone numbers that are calling us, if you answer and you get to speak on them a little bit, they can actually capture your voice and AI can now replicate your voice. We might actually start getting calls from loved ones that, don't, that aren't real, scary stuff. I haven't had any of those yet, but that's the future, so we really have to be careful of that. The other thing with these callers, if you're on the phone with somebody, these suspects usually will not let you off the phone. In most cases, if they're gonna get money from you, for, to go, they'll have you go to the bank and they'll still be on the phone with you. They do not want you to hang up because they don't want you to take a chance of you wisening up or getting help. They wanna keep you on that phone, keep that scam going. So a lot of times they're gonna be very insistent about not hanging up. I have a couple of examples here of calls we, our victims have received, uh, claiming to be uh, the police department. Uh, Audio's been having some issues. I don't know. I'm calling in regards to a legal matter. I'm trying to establish contact with a Please give me a call back at 707-633-3523. Have a blessed day. Part that was cut off, he claimed to be from the Fairfield Police Department. He also had a 707 number, which is a local number. So you have to be, it sounds pretty legit. A lot of times these phone numbers you can get generated off the internet, find a free phone number and use that for scams. So the phones could be something local. I had one recently that actually they've taken over one of the Fairfield PD's numbers. So when the victim actually got wise, tried to call it back, it actually went to a Fairfield PD number. So he thought it was legitimate at that point and then forwarded the money. So that one was kind of the extreme I've seen, but you can't understand it. It may not be just a weird random number. It could be a local number. A legal matter at 706. Daddy was having issues in this uh, PowerPoint. Call back about a legal matter at 707-633-9592, okay? Thank you. And this one, at the very beginning that was cut off, this guy represents actually a Fairfield Police Department employee. Probably found the name in an article or something that was uh, out to the public, so he represented one of our actual employees and identified himself as that. So if you did some searching for this person, you'd actually recognize him as a Fairfield employee, a Fairfield PD officer, 
So it sounds like it's more legit, so you have to be careful that was a scam. So a newest, newer trend that we've run into is called quishing. A lot of places have these QR codes now. You can pay for things, you can get your menus off the table. COVID gave us that. They don't want to hand out menus in some restaurants anymore. They'll just have a code at the end of the table. You scan that with your phone, it'll bring the menu up. These are, this is the future and we are already seeing a lot of it. Um, recently I went to Sacramento and actually paid for parking with one of these, these QR codes. The problem is suspects are now also printing up their own stickers with these QR codes and they're slapping their QR codes over the legitimate ones. So you, you click on it, you scan it, you think you're making a payment or doing something with the legit business and it turns out to be one of these scammers. So you really have to, before you, you scan these codes, you gotta kinda look and make sure it's something more legitimate versus a sticker that's put on something. So just be aware of that. There is quite a bit of that going on. Okay, pig butchering. What's pig butchering? Um, pig butchering is kind of a trend that's been going on for the last few years. Um, really big, big losses. Um, most of the money goes overseas. Um, it can be used typically in romance scams or investment schemes. Um, somehow the suspects will develop a rapport either online or phone or both with the victim, they may not even want any money up front. They're gonna really become your buddy, your friend, and somehow they're going to say, there's this awesome, awesome investment opportunity. You should look into this. I just made $10,000 while we're sitting on the phone. They'll kind of get you to put in a little bit of money initially. They might even give you a little money back to think that you're actually making money, and then they're gonna take you for as much as they can get for you. The idea of the term, it's pretty crude, but you're, the victim is the pig, and they're gonna fat you, fatten you up before they butcher you. So that's the term pig butchering. They're gonna fatten you up with all the, the schemes and the, the flattery, and then once they get as much money they think they've gotten from you, then the, the, the butchering is actually they're gonna cut off contact and take all your money. So um, big losses, big losses in this. Um, there's some great publications, um, stories, and, um, and um, different things that have been done on pig butchering. They're out there, you can probably find them on YouTube. Um, most of this is coming out of Southeast Asia, um, Malaysia, uh, Miramar right now is in civil unrest, so China's buying acres and acres and acres there and building these huge compounds that's just for this. There's actually a big human trafficking component to this as well. A lot of the people that are talking to you, they're actually human trafficking victims, and if they do not get your money, they could have horrible things happening to them. So there's a whole other side of this outside this country that is, that is funding these scams, really big money, big business, but there's usually another side to it. So if you're interested in learning more about it, there's some great things that have been published on this now. Um, I don't have time to go into it here, but it's amazing how they're getting our money and what's behind it with these scams. Let's talk for a second about mail theft. Uh, mail theft is still extremely big. It's usually more localized, but um, people are still, our local criminals are still stealing our mail. They're usually either looking for checks or credit cards they can use quickly, or they're gonna be trying to steal your identity. Your mail is very valuable to the right people out there. And typically they're gonna get as much mail as they can, and they're gonna try and build your identity through that. There's also pay for websites that the public can access. If you pay a little bit of money every month, you can get more information on people. Um, and so I found these suspects have actually enrolled on these. They've used a stolen credit card to pay for it, but they're getting more information off their victims through these websites. And usually they get this information from um, certain public records, um, utility bills, other things that are given to the public. Um, so you have to be very, very careful with your mail. Try to get as many um, things as you can, especially uh, um, more secret documents, bank statements, that kind of thing. Try and get those by email versus having them mailed. Try to avoid checks. I could take any one of your checks in this room, take that, take the information off the bottom and make my own checks and go access your account right now. When you mail a check or have a check go out there, that's what you're doing is giving your banking information to whoever ends up with that check. So it, it is a problem. It's an older technology that you really need to be concerned about. Um, and a lot of times they will try and intercept your mail as you're mailing checks, sending checks out there because that's just that check, even if it's made out to somebody else, they could either wash the information and cash it themselves or usually the more savvy ones are just trying to get the banking information off there. They can then print their own checks and access your account. Usually they can send numerous checks out within a period of a day or two before your bank realizes it. So 
try to avoid using checks if you can. I know that's hard if you're kind of in your ways with that, but um, try and pay bills online if you can. Um, and just try not to mail checks if you can avoid it. If you have to mail a check, try and take it to its in location. Say you're paying your county taxes, try and take it straight to the county building versus send it in the mail. If you can, whether you have you do your own taxes or have an accountant, try and uh, send all tax returns online um, through the IRS website. During tax time, mail theft shoots up because they know there's critical things being sent through the mail, and that's usually when our mail thefts go up. So you got to try and limit the use of the, the mail if you can. Pay bills online. Most of our legit businesses, banks, um, credit companies, things of those natures, our utility companies, they have pretty secure websites. So it's typically safe to use those. Um, we have to trust somebody, and I think it's still safer than sending stuff in the mail. So um, if you can, set up an online bill pay. I did get the question from somebody in a previous presentation. If I'm by myself, how do I know how to do this? Well, this person did use an accountant for things. See if your accountant will help you. Usually they're gonna be more savvy about it. Find somebody that can help you get through this and set up your bills online. Um, if we don't have that person, usually like the local senior centers or other groups will, will have somebody that can help you. So try and reach out, use resources to get the knowledge that you need if you do not know how to do it yourself. You can protect your mail, get a locking mailbox. Um, locking mailboxes are a deterrent, they're not foolproof, so if somebody really wants in your mailbox, they can pry it open, but it's one extra step, so sometimes they'll just move on to the next open mailbox. So it's a deterrent, but it's not gonna be completely safe, so don't rely on the fact that you have a locking mailbox that your mail is completely safe. Uh, try to get all your bills and statements digitally if you can. Um, that's ideal, so nothing it can be intercepted in the mail. Forms of payment and some currencies. So our payment applications, whether you use them or not, it is kind of the future in many ways. Um, PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Facebook Pay, those are just a few of them. Um, Cash App is another one. They serve a purpose and they're a great way to pay certain people. If a couple of you go out to dinner tonight, one pays for it, the other one can just send them some quick money by Zelle or by Venmo. It makes it very easy. You don't have to go to the ATM, you don't have to write them a check, you can just send money immediately. It's real easy. I have a lot of scams though that end up going to this and using this. And you don't even have to have an account to use it. They will get you to get an account and use this for that purpose. So um, it is definitely, it's, it's convenient for our day-to-day -day lives, but at the same time, a lot of scammers do use it as well. So you have to kind of be careful with that. Make sure whoever you're paying or working with is somebody you know. Um, a lot of times you can either put in a debit card in these and use a debit card so there's no fees, or you can use a credit card and um, the account, will, the, the, whatever charge it is, can either go to your credit card or you can pay from your credit card. Usually there's a little bit of a fee to that. But there is legitimate reasons for to use these, but you just have to also be careful with the suspects as well. Gift cards. Two things about gift cards. If somebody is asking you to pay for something with gift cards and they want you to just get a gift card, read all the information on the back of the card to them, that's not legitimate. So don't do that. I still have a lot of cases where that happens. I've uh, recently, our patrol officers went out to Lowe's. We had a person that was scammed. Uh, the person bought several expensive gift cards. The cashier noticed something was wrong, called us. We went out there and the victim was in her car actively giving the suspects on the phone the information on the back of the cards when we got there. That is not legitimate. You try not to do that if you can avoid it. If you're going to buy physical gift cards in the store, don't buy the ones right on the rack. Typically suspects will go in, they'll record the information on the gift cards that are right there in the front and they'll wait for somebody to buy those and then they'll access your gift cards and take your money before you're able to do anything with them. So pull several of them off the rack, grab the ones in the back. <laughs> That's the best way if you're gonna buy a physical gift card or most places sell gift cards online now. You can just simply get the gift card information and email that gift card to somebody or print it up and hand it to them. Cryptocurrency. I currently do not work cryptocurrency cases. I don't have enough training to try and work with them. Um, if I, the best I can say about cryptocurrency, if you don't use it, you don't understand it, stay away from it. I have a, quite a few victims that get pulled into scams and they show up at these cryptocurrency ATMs at our gas stations and they're giving over thousands of dollars and they know nothing about what they're doing. And they're just giving over the money because the scammers are that good. If you don't understand cryptocurrency, do not use it or get well versed in it before you start using it. Uh, that's the best I can say. I hope to work crypto cases in the future, but right now I'm just, I don't have time to learn is one thing. And also it's just, uh, it's something I just don't know enough about. So 
Um, bank wire transfers, still quite a bit of these. I mentioned earlier, the suspects will be on the phone with the victim, the victim shows up at the bank and the suspects tell the, tell the victim what to tell the tellers so they can get their money transferred over. Um, uh, Senator Dodd uh, out of this area just recently got a bill signed that's hopefully gonna go into effect where banks are now gonna be legally responsible to try and recognize these, these scams more. Um, I'm hoping it gets signed, I'm hoping it goes forward because then they'll put the banks on notice that you need to do more. Right now, they're already required to, if you look like you're getting scammed, usually an older person, they're required to ask these hard questions. That's why the suspects stay on the phone because they know how to, talk you, how to tell you to talk around those questions and I've had quite a few cases of that. The suspects have told the victim what to tell the teller and they've still gotten their money. But the tellers are supposed to ask these questions. So if your teller starts giving you a little hassle about getting your own money, just understand that they're required to and they're probably gonna have to do even more of that in the future. Checks, I already talked about that. So this is a tough one for me. Coming from a financial background, it's hard for me to stand up here and tell you to use credit cards. I do not want you paying fees to banks for credit cards. It's, it's, it's everything I'm against. However, there is a little bit of protection that comes with credit cards versus debit cards or checks. And that comes down to the bank services. So if you pay for something fraudulently or if your check is stolen and they access your account or if your ATM card is stolen, they access your account, you should in those circumstances get money back, but it may take days if not weeks. And if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you don't have a lot of money in your account, that could be the difference from paying bills and buying food. Nobody wants to go through that. And typically they're gonna want a police report, so you have to do that before they'll even talk to you. Credit cards, on the other hand, they're usually going to freeze the credit card and remove the fee or the charge immediately. And you're not out of anything. You haven't paid them your money yet. It goes on your credit card bill. They're usually gonna freeze your credit card, issue a new credit card, and wipe the charge off of there. You're not out anything. So there is that level of security with using credit cards versus debit cards or checks. However, do not take my advice if you do not pay your credit card off every month. I do not want you paying extra fees. So if you're, you can be good about paying your credit card off every month, by all means, consider doing that. But if you're going to rack up charges and pay the banks more, don't do it. So how can I protect myself? This is critical. Be skeptical of anybody asking for money. It's your money, you gotta protect it. I have had very horrible conversations with people on the phone, people that are losing their houses, people that have lost their retirements, people that are borderline gonna become homeless because they've given everything to these scammers and they want me to do something about it. Very, very, very rarely am I going to be able to get your money back. It's up to you to protect it. Money moves way too fast in our system and I'm usually way behind. Typically, let's say a wire transfer, that's something I could definitely work. You wire some money for, to somebody for something. I'm gonna get the information from you. It may come into me hopefully within a couple of days. It may take a week or two. I am then going to get the necessary information. I then have to write a search warrant for every bank that's involved. Banks do not work with me. They do not wanna work with law enforcement. They will only work with us with uh, legal subpoenas or search warrants. I have to write a search warrant. I then have to get a judge to sign it. I have to serve it to the bank. Banks by under California law are required to furnish these records within 10 days. I have not had a single bank ever follow the law. Certain banks automatically will say we need 30 day extension, which I can't authorize, but they don't care. They still take that 30 or 40 days to, to get it. So your money's gone. I am now probably within a, a week could be fast for me to get a search warrant served on a bank. Then it could take upwards of over a month for them to get me records. The odds of that money still being in that account a month plus later, very slim. And so I can find the records to trace where that money went, but usually it all goes overseas at some point, other countries. Um, I've tra tracked money to probably a good dozen countries at this point, but by the time I'm getting the records, the money's long gone. Once it leaves the country, I can't do anything with it. I've tried, um, the government just does, the feds just usually will not, they have their own cases, they usually will not help with that. Um, and I have limited, limited ability to go after banks out of state as well. It has to be a bank that does business in California. So really hit or miss. It's your money. You have to protect it. I have had some success stories. Recently had my biggest one where I was able to get about $83,000 back for a victim. That was a rare occurrence, but it doesn't happen too often. But the circumstances with that is I got the information fast enough. I was able to freeze the accounts. It worked out, but typically that's not not the norm. I need you to protect your money. 
So you have to assume once, you, once, you, once it leaves your hands, your account, it's gone. Ask questions, did I contact this person or is this random? Why is it that I'm speaking to this person? What's going on here? Please have one person in your life, close friend or family member, somebody you can run this stuff by, please, because most of the time an outside fresh mind can look at this and say, no, that's a scam, look at this. You guys are gonna be those people for others now because you're much more aware. You're here to, tonight to learn. You can now be that person, that, that close friend or family member for your friends and family because usually somebody from the outside can look at something and say, no way that is that legitimate. And please do that. If you do not have that person in your life, you can call the police department, put a call for service in. It may take us a little time to get back to you, but we can call you and usually direct you in the right direction with something. And that does happen uh, occasionally where somebody will call us about an email or something. We'll be able to look at it and tell them, no, this is a scam. So have that one person. Verify all information by a separate source. You get an email or a text message from a certain bank, your bank, don't call that information that they gave you, call a separate number. A number you find, a number on the back of your bank statements, on your credit card, whatever it is. Verify information from a separate source. Don't ever go by the information they gave you. You're gonna to have to change your passcodes occasionally. It does happen, a lot, of, a lot of sites do require that now. I know it's a pain. I probably have a good couple dozen sites that I regularly log into just for work. That's not even personal. And I'm always having to change my passcodes, but it's a necessary evil in our world. Especially if you're doing a lot of stuff using the same password online. At some point, they may get it somewhere and then they can log into all your accounts if you use the same, same password. Um, you can monitor your credit reports. Um, it's a good idea at least once a year just to check your credit reports, make sure nothing's popped up on there that shouldn't be there. Um, I believe most of them are free now. There's three major credit agencies. Um, it's good to check all of them because they all report different things. This one's big. Please don't be ashamed or embarrassed. Okay, I have victims from all types, all walks of life, all different people. I had a uh, chief of police or like a few months ago that is actually a victim of a scam. I got sort of victimized a few months ago. It was leading to that way. I got sucked into a, uh, a Facebook Messenger scam that I thought was legitimate at first. So it happens to all of us. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. And the second part of that is I need to know about it as soon as possible. If you actually did give money, Time is of the essence. If I get the information soon, I have a better chance to try and get money for you or get your money back than if you wait to report it. And a lot of these cases, it's usually a family member that reports it once they find out their loved one was scammed. And so by that, it could be weeks. I'm not gonna be able to help you. And I have that, have that difficult conversation with you. Um, like I said, I've had people lose their houses. Recently, a case that stands out, I had a person that had just retired six months ago. He wanted to try and get better earnings on his retirement turned his entire 401k account over to a scammer, lost everything. He was about to go back to work. And here he was of a retirement age and was just going back to work starting from square one. Those are not easy conversations to have. And we're starting to see this start to hurt people as well physically with certain things. So it's taking its toll on all of our, our, our citizens out there. Another uh, question I want to answer is, will the banks help me? I have to answer, well, it depends. If you fall victim to a scam where you willingly give your money away somehow, typically they're not gonna help you. You willingly gave this away, whether it's a scam or not, typically they're not gonna give you the money because all the banks are gonna do is write off the losses. If your credit card's stolen, your check is stolen, and you had nothing to do with the fraud, usually they will refund your money. It may take some time, but they typically will do it. But if you willingly give your money away, I think I've seen one case, and I was shocked that it happened where they actually gave the victim their money back because the bank is now out of the loss. And if you gave it away, they're not gonna usually back you. So that's why it's critical to protect your own money. Um, so yeah, did you willing to send the money or not? That's kind of gonna be the big question. Um, there is a little bit more um, protection with elder abuse cases. Um, they're supposed to watch for this stuff and they may or may not, depending on the circumstances, help you with that. Where can I go for help? Well, most banks and financial institutions are gonna want a police report. So you need to call us. Um, the only thing I can say about our case and my case investigation, which I usually get asked about, is I'm one person. I cannot possibly look at all the cases that come across my desk. I have to pick and choose the ones that I'm able to look at, the ones that I feel are workable that I can make a difference with, and those are the ones that get worked. A lot of them, I just don't have the time. However, the way I triage these cases is we're typically going to ask, first of all, do you want prosecution? Are you calling us just to get the police report to get your, your bank to refund the money or do you actually want prosecution of a suspect? 
Then I'm going to ask, are you willing to go to court to testify? Court is not a pleasant experience. Those of you who have served in jury duty, that's a very small example of the court process. And it's not the most pleasant process, but I have to have a victim that will go to court to testify before I can do anything. So I'm going to be very specific about the answer to those two questions. And if you answer no to either one of those, I'm not going to look at your case. I just don't have time. Plus, it won't go anywhere because I need to have a victim to show up to court. So those are two things that we're going to ask right off the bat. FBI, the IC3 website, they like to try and keep track of the scams, so that's a good place to go. The best organization I've found with these type of scams is, believe it or not, is AARP. They are fabulous for all ages, not just uh, people retired. For all ages, they do a lot with uh, these scams. And if you want to go to their website, they have every scam you can think of, publications on this stuff on there. Um, great organization. They show up to all the financial crimes conferences. They set up booths there. They are fabulous. So I would highly suggest maybe taking some time to look at their website and look at the stuff that they have publicized on there. You can report stuff to the Federal Trade Commission as well. Um, I have the three credit agencies listed there also. You can check those. You know, if you don't have any fraud or identity theft, once a year is good. Um, postal service, um, if you have mail theft or other issues. There's also, if you fall victim to a cryptocurrency scam, please call us and speak to us before you speak to anybody else. There are companies out there that they refer to as cryptocurrency tracking companies. They will charge big money to do what's basically easy for all of us to do on the internet. All cryptocurrency travels through blockchains that is readily available to, the, to any of us on the internet if you know where to look. They, any of this information is available on there. They're going to charge you a lot of money saying they can get their money back. Well, they don't have the ability to get your money back. They're then going to send us the information and hope that we can get your money back. So try to avoid them before talking to your law enforcement agencies. That's my contact information. Does anybody have any questions? I'll have you use the microphone so we can oh. record it. Um, the FBI is the Federal Bureau of Investigation, of course. The FTC is the Federal Trade Commission. They do track some of these scams as well. Um, it's not necessarily a law enforcement side, but they do like to have an idea of what is going on in the, in the U.S., so they will track certain things. The FBI is a little bit more legitimate. Certain cryptocurrency scams, they can, if you log the right information on there, they can actually keep that information logged. So if they work a bigger case at the federal level and they find money that came from your cryptocurrency chain, then they can actually probably get you some of your money back. And so there's a little bit of a good purpose when cryptocurrency scams with the IC3. So big thing here is please, there's a handful of you here, get the information out. The reason why we're doing this is I want as many people to know about this as possible. I'm trying to stop the bleeding with my cases. I have too many victims. They're horrible cases. I'm trying to stop this. I'd love for you guys not to give your money away, your friends, family. Please get the word out. That's what we're all here about. We're here to be proactive and try and stop these scams from happening in Fairfield. I'd like to know if there's any chance that you get recordings of what these people say and how, how they can convince pretty reasonable people that what they're saying is true and, how, and these people just give over everything they've got and it seems okay at that moment. Well, you gotta understand with like the pig butchering cases, for example, there's a victim over there on the other end of the phone and there's something bad's gonna happen to them if they don't get your money. So they have to be savvy with what they do or they could get hurt or in some cases killed. So that's their whole purpose is to get your money. So they're gonna be good at what they do and it works. That's why they're still in business. So yes, I've tried, tried with that Amazon account the other day or the Amazon call, they wouldn't answer the phone for me. So I'm working on that. Hopefully in the near future, I, can, I would love to click on one of these links or call one of these numbers and prevent anything from happening, but try and get a recording of what they're saying and doing. They're savvy though. Um, that's hopefully in the near future, I'll have something like that. Go with him first. Yeah, I went shopping at uh, Home Depot and unknowingly uh, my card was scanned and he, he spent it took me three months to figure out that I was missing money. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So when I went back through, I went to the bank and I showed them what went on. And they were, they agreed with me and they gave me my money back. But it was just, a, it, was, it was scanned right out of my pocket. That there's, the technology is always changing or usually a step behind on it. Um, my understanding is that they've kind of eliminated that with the chip feature in cards now. So hopefully that's a thing of the past. But these suspects get pretty savvy. They can do a lot of different things. So go ahead. Uh, there was recently a, a scam out at Costco where there was a card skimmer on the pay at the pump for yes. gas. And there was a question that came up of if you use your phone or the card to do a tap versus actually scanning the card, can they get the information from a tap if you use your phone or if you tap the card? Do you know anything about that? All I can say to that is the technology is always improving. I've heard that the chip features on cards are much more secure. That's harder to get the information if at all. I haven't heard any cases where they've gotten the information off the actual chip. Swipers, yes, they can get the information off the label or the actual strip on the back of your card. I haven't heard of any chip cases yet. However, again, they're always improving their their um, their ability to do things. The phones, I don't know what to tell you with that because I don't I don't use my phone for payments typically because I don't necessarily know if I want somebody scanning my phone, even though it could be just a credit card. So. Um, the way you can go back to that is maybe you use credit cards versus ATM cards. You have that security with the credit card. Just pay it off every month, please. <laughs> but with credit cards, you get a little bit of more security to it. So anybody else? Okay. Well, I'll be around for a little while. If anybody has any questions they want to ask in front of everybody, um, thank you again for coming. Please talk to your loved ones, talk to friends. Let's try and stop this together. Um, I'm, I hate having those phone calls with people where they've lost everything and I can't help them. So let's try and stop that. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.